this is this is uh, the first of uh, three comparison tests we're going to do. And when we're done, we'll compare the results side by side. But this is the, I guess you could say the basis, the 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 rel the the relative sample, the the control, if you were. And this is test is going to be on the Technicolor C2100T DSO modem. Now this modem is hooked to CenturyLink. It is a 40 meg down, 2 meg up connection. Uh, this this uh, modem, it's a very good DSO modem and a lot of features, excellent firewall, that type of thing, but one thing it cannot deal with is buffer blow. And um, this is the primary issue I'm having. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to test this modem. We're going to show you how bad the buffer bloat is. And then we'll repeat this, this same bank of tests um, on uh, another setup, which is, again, the DSL modem will always be involved, but this time it will be set in transparent bridging mode, and we'll have a TP-Link RLH60 uh, router doing the routing duties and the modem will just basically be a, a, an access device. It will not be a, a router. It won't be doing a routing or firewalling. Uh, the the uh, TP-Link router will do that. And then finally, also in transparent bridging mode, we will test the Edge Router X configured with SQM or Smart Q Management, which is supposed to eliminate what you're about to see. So let's get started. Enough talk. Okay, now remember, this is the C2100T with no modems, routers, anything in front of it. There are no background applications. Nothing is using a connection but this right now. And you can see on the downstream connection, this is supposed to be 40 mega, megabits for roughly 36, 37. There it is, the upstream. It was 562, 2, 578, 201, 142, 227, 336, 290, 447, 572, 105, five, a lot of over 500. You could see how bad the buffer bloat is. Um, I have a friend who has a similar connection, same uh, ISP on the other side of town. He gets much better connection speed. He has the same quality of service I do, but he's getting 5 megabits up. Uh, this is actually one of the better uh, results I've gotten, but it usually ranges between 1.7 and 2.2 .2 megabits up. But the buffer load is intolerable, and it causes problems, especially with upstream. You think, well, you know, who cares? You could still watch movies and out whatever downstream. Not really. What happens is that every time you downstream, there's always control packets of control data going upstream. When there is a heavy use of, of the connection, especially if multiple devices are using connection, they can hog so much bandwidth that those upstream packets uh, have a harder time getting back through the control packets or, or uh, keep alive packets, things like that. And what happens is suddenly you get stuttering, uh, you get buffering, you get locked up browsers, that type of thing. So, in order to fix that, we have to we have to do something about getting rid of the latency. And most of the latency involved, especially in DSL, is from buffer bloat, which is overloaded buffers who introduce excess latency instead of letting the packets go in real time, instead of prioritizing real time traffic, it queues everything up so it's it's a crapshoot whether or not your real time packets are going to get there in time. And real time is critical for things like gaming and good quality, you know, HD uh, uh, movies and, 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 and video and that type of thing, such as Netflix or, or Amazon Video, that type of thing. So stay with us. Um, and uh, in a minute here, we'll show you the test results from the uh, transparent bridge mode of the C2100T technical router uh, DSL modem. I hooked up to the uh, TP-Link router and then finally the edge router and we'll see 
the differences and if we see any improvement from the new Edge Router X that we have. So stay tuned. All right. We've seen, and this is actually because I've used this browser before, I have cleared the cache, but the cookies are still there. You can see I've actually tested this before, and these are all the test results, these four results from the straight CenturyLink C2100T Technicolor modem. Now what we're going to do is we've hooked up the TP-Link uh, RL860 router. The CenturyLink DSO modem is now in transparent bridging mode. And we're going to see what kind of difference we get here. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to pay particular attention to the buffer loads. Remember, we were going over 550 milliseconds on the upstream side with just the DSL modem. Yep, pretty much terrible. Okay, so we've tested the straight DSL modem. We've tested with an external router hooked up. We try to get the modem out of it, out of the picture, and see if the uh, router, a separate router, could improve this at all. And apparently not. Now let's move on to the Edge Router X. All right, so this is it. I've tested the Century Link 2100T by Technicolor DSL modem by itself, which first introduced us to the problem buffer blow. Then we threw uh, another router at it and put the, the DSL modem into transparent bridging mode to see if we could alleviate some issues, and they just seemed to get a little worse, actually. Now... We have the Ubiquiti Edge Router X in the mix. Again, DSL modem is in transparent bridging mode. All firewalls on the DSL modem and such are turned off as before. And uh, the firewall is enabled for the uh, Ubiquiti Edge Router X uh, router. So we do have security and protection. Um, and we'll be looking at that a little bit uh, later. But uh, for now, what we really want to see is did this fix our buffer bloat problem? Well, let's see if it did. Testing now.
as before, we're going to run this test three more times just to see. And again, we've got an A rating. Now, that's a very, very good result. I'd say that the purchase of the Edge Router X has indeed done something. Now, while the speeds are kind of pathetic by today's uh, standards, the fact is, without that buffer bloat, I'll be able to get better uh, and more consistent downloads and my upstream uh, speeds while not ideal I would like to see more the fact is this connection is maxed out it's as good as it's going to get um, the only thing I could improve it is if if CenturyLink decides to actually improve uh, the wiring in their in their equipment on their end which won't happen but this is very good so this router has done quite a bit and one of the things it does, which most routers will do, and the TP-Link did excessively, was it will tend to dial back the speeds a little bit to try to keep within the, uh, re the requested uh, uh, latency norms. That's all it can do. It is basically a part of QoS, uh, but it's smart queue management, which means it's constantly looking at the packets coming through and seeing if there's anything it can do, prioritizing real-time traffic, that kind of thing. So good, this looks like a win.